Hello everybody, Prince the Bear here and we're back at the boardwalk because we so rarely get new things over here. I know, and now we have a whole new deli. The boardwalk deli built on the carcass of what's left of the boardwalk. Yes, so we're here to try some New Jersey style stuff. Apparently they have vegan options, so let's go get our deli. WandaVision. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. Sunkiss Hour Cocktails is a small local um, New York location. They used a um, Brooklyn distilled vodka for this one, so it's all locally made with uzu, peach, key lime, and jasmine all together. Um, so I'm kind of excited to see what this is like. The vodka is made in Brooklyn. Like I said, they have the all of the ingredients listed out straight here, so you can just read everything for what it is and then enjoy. Cheers. Ooh. Wow. The uzu comes comes through. It's very strong. It's very citrusy. It most definitely feels like a summer drink. Um, if you like grapefruit or like those really like tart, tangy fruit type of drinks, you're going to enjoy this. Me, I'm not that into it. Uh, so I think I'm probably going to give like a two out of five tart citrus fruits. It's just, just a little bit too citrusy for me. But if you are a citrus person, you'll absolutely love this. I expect my social hour cocktails. Good name, by the way. Actual good name, not like some super long brewery names. Social hour cocktails to be a bit taller. This is like baby Red Bull sized. 11.3% um, alcohol, so I assume it's got a kick, but uh, I think tall boys. Just saying. Ooh. Quite refreshing though. You would really taste like the user and the peach together. The key lime gives it a bit citrus in the back end, but nothing crazy. Um, I can't really taste the vodka, but I can tell that it's alcohol and it's. If you consume alcohol in moderation, and you definitely should, I would say it's actually not bad. I was expecting to be as horrible some of the other canned cocktails we've gotten, like uh, the cut water ones that we've gotten in the Valley Resorts, which has not ended well for us, like ever. This is actually something I would recommend to people, but I'm thinking that if you're coming here for like dinner, maybe lunch, just hit up Margarita Joe's. Or if the Bellevue Lounge is open, come up here and get a drink. Much better idea, but these are still not too terrible. Three and a half out of five plus. This is our second option here from Social Hour Cocktails, but it is not all of the options that they have available. They have several more available on their website if you check it out. Now on, I was checking out the details of their drinks on their website, then I realized I don't have to do that because it's all back here. Even the name of the ragtime rye whiskey that they use in this drink is um, bottled in New York, aged for three to six years. Very nice. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try this. Botanical Fernet, handcrafted in Brooklyn. This is literally like the pinnacle of local, drink local. I want more like drink local type drinks like this around. This is amazing. Oh. 
Oh, well, it needs it needs a is there a lemon in this? It needs lime and ice and lots of garnish. Maybe some peach. Ooh. These drinks pack a punch, but I don't know if this is the kind of punch that I like. It, it almost reminds me of those like Jameson ginger lime drinks that we had recently where like it was used as a mixer. I feel like this is one of those things for me, but I'm still gonna drink it. I will give it a three and a half out of five whiskeys. I definitely like this one better than the Sunkist. You know social hour if you, you know, wanna collab, partner up, be the face of your new cocktail. Just saying, I'm not above that in any way, short. I will say, be, for all companies that make alcohol one, normalize putting all your ingredients on the back. This is great. Having to look up ingredients for alcohol, what your process is, just put on the label. Give, give people something to read at the very least. Ooh, that's strong. It's definitely, uh, you can definitely taste the rye whiskey. If you don't like rye whiskeys, I'm gonna have a problem with this, but I like the flavor, even with the lemon. It's a very like drinkable cocktail. Like if we had a private beach, like the one that's over by Beach Club, I could get some of these and set up in the sand, you know, sometime that August. This is not, I kinda like these. Like three and a half out of five plus. have a beautiful mixed berry salad. We got strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, quinoa, and a berry uh, vinaigrette to put on top. Now we poured some of the vinaigrette. We only used about a fourth of it. There's so much vinaigrette. If you are one of those people that love to like drench your salad in dressing, they definitely offer that to you. nice with like the seeds and stuff bright refreshing I love me some strawberries hmm the vinaigrette isn't too overpowering the complements everything really nicely I'm sure once I toss everything together it's gonna be even better I'm not a big salad person bear is a rabbit food person on this channel I think I got this so that we could share, but I don't think he's gonna wanna share it with me. I think he's gonna take the whole thing. I'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five salad. Okay. Toss is my salad. This is the family salad. There's something about berries in the salad to me that just works. Maybe it's my foraging roots. Backstory, I have no foraging roots. I am not an outdoorsy person. I was when I was younger, but I wouldn't call that outdoors. He was like forced Boy Scouts. Tangent. Either way, berries on the salad. We have lots of different kinds of greens. Here we're on a lot of different kinds. Coloration on the greens is good. Got some huge berries in here, which I'm not mad about. With that, I'm gonna get a strawberry too. We're all big for it. This is probably a ridiculous mouthful, and you really shouldn't eat it like this, but I'm a bear, and I don't listen to my own advice. Mm. That dressing with the berries, it's like the perfect balance of like sweetness and tart. It's like the berries and the dressing are dependent on each other to make this a good salad. It's top tier, like top, top tier. And for like a pre-made salad, I am very impressed. Four and a half out of five plus. I could do with maybe something else for like some texture, but other than that, if I was looking for a quick snack before I ran an Epcot, I would have to pick this over anything else. Maybe more seeds? Maybe more seeds. Or quinoa? Hmm, I don't know about the quinoa. I know you're, you're pained about quinoa. Hmm. Good, good, good. This is the very wet veggie crunch muffaletta with 
uh, cured and pickled root vegetables, which you can kind of see. I'm gonna take it apart here. You can see the root vegetables here. And then we have a pepper jack cheese. As you can see, you got two slices of that. And then an olive teponade on the bottom, which has made this bottom bun basically disintegrate and wet. I would have probably put it in between the root vegetables and the cheese. With this nice focaccia. Now it feels amazing, but I'm gonna flip it upside down simply because it's so wet down here. I don't know if you can tell. You can see how wet it is, but it's just, it's just soggy AF in the middle. I love the bread. The bread is a 10. The root vegetables are pickled and seasoned beautifully. That, what's it called? No, um, the tip. Tapenade? Tapenade, the olive tapenade is where you lose me. It's very beautifully done. It's, it's seasoned perfectly. It balances everything nicely. It is a beautiful sandwich. But I don't like olives. I don't like olives at all. So for me, it's straight ick. But I appreciate the flavors. I appreciate the flavors so much. I'll actually probably take a couple more bites before I just eat the top bread and then make Bear eat the rest of it. If you like olives, you need to come get this every single time you come here because it is amazing. If you don't like olives like me, maybe just ask for bread if you're gonna go, maybe. It's still really good though. It is good. So I'm always amazed when they manage to find something uh that is plant-based without using alt meats and have the creative ways they can in which they do that. I can definitely agree on the placement of the tapenade because yeah, it is literally soaked all the way through. And the the top the bottom of this bread is like a Florida pothole. Like it's like one hard press away from just falling in. Uh, you know, sinkhole style. I like the uh, pepper jack plant-based cheese. I feel like it looks like follow your heart cheese, could be wrong. I really can't tell the difference for that smell. I remember uh, and the pickled vegetables I was very worried the prince is getting the sandwich because I've had regular mufalettas um, certain places around North Florida and they are extremely strong with the olive but couldn't be olive bad could it mmm mmm I'm taking a bite of that. Mm. <laughs> this sandwich is everything that I wish the Pop Century vegetable sandwich could have been. I think this is a dry vegetables later on a huge chunk of bread. But the flavors they pack into that are so true to what a mucoletta actually is. Without missing the meat at all, uh, you get a nice crunch. So they truly its name, mucoletta crunch. Uh, as far as plant-based sandwich goes, that's probably the best I've ever had. I'm giving it a five out of five claws. Even with the soggy bread, this is, if you're a vegetarian vegan, must get. So good make a perfect park break snack or even a light dinner definitely one of the options that is plant-based that you can get with your food is this coleslaw now i'm pretty sure this slaw is from regal eagle but i am not mad at the fact that like disney is all hundred percent 
behind vegan coleslaw like as a normal thing let's let's normalize you know not using mayo I'm not usually a big slaw fan because it's usually overly sauced. But this one's not. This one's actually really nice. It's got some nice seasonings to it. It's not just like pepper and mayo and let's go. It's got, you know, like some depth and textures to it. I might actually eat the whole thing and not give it all the bear. Hmm. Yeah. It does gave me regal eagle vibes and i'm not mad at that regal eagle is amazing I'm give this a four out of five coleslaws it's a nice cup of slaw i like slaw i would consider myself a slaw kind of bear maybe not kind of sore kind of bear i like a good slaw if you ruin slaw for me i get kind of offended so it's nice carrots nice shredded lettuce in there definitely Seasoning. This is a little liquidy at the bottom, but not enough to like ruin the slaw. Ooh, it's got a crunch. It's good slaw, right? Mm. It's really good slaw. It is definitely above average slaw. Well, seasoned and cut without being soggy. I'm gonna bore with that. Three and a half out of five claws. This is your other option for side. It is chips. I think this is more of a value than getting the coleslaw because the coleslaw is such a tiny little cup, whereas this is a bag. And I do appreciate the fact that these come pre-packaged as sides. So like if I wanted to eat my sandwich now, but then I wanted chips later, I could take these into the park with me as a snack instead of like having to eat everything on a plate immediately. Same thing with the slaw. If I wanted to go picnic in the park, I could I could just take the slaw in the container. How awesome is that? Now these chips we have had many times before at value hotels, at moderate hotels, at deluxe hotels. These are house-made chips. You can find them everywhere on property. The best place to eat these chips is actually at the Territory Lounge at Wilderness Lodge because it comes with like a plant-based ranch dip, which is really nice. Mm. Some people like ruffles. Some people like Lay's. I like Disney chips. Like if I could go to the grocery store and buy Disney chips like this, I would do it all the time. And this would be my main piece. I would put this on everything. They're so consistent. It doesn't matter where you go. If you see house-made chips, they're all... They're all good. Four out of five chips. No complaints. I just wish it had sauces to go with. Welcome in. This is actually a nice size bag of chips. And a recyclable bag, no less. Uh, you could have also gotten a soup, but it was a tomato basil soup, not marked as vegan. I'm sure like most tomato basil soups, there's cream in it. So it's vegetarian, but not vegan. Uh, it's far too hot for soup anyway, right now. But chips, it's always a good time for chips. Ooh, that crunch. Mmm. You know? Instead of a fly fright, a fly flight for food and wine, I should have just done American chips. Nice. It's a lot better than soggy, terrible, Instagrammable, everybody seems to love, but I can't stand fly fry. It would be nice if you could do salt and vinegar chip, you could do barbecue chip, then you could do a, a sweet potato chip. Mm -hmm. You could do the same exact flight. With actual flavor. Disney chips are always good. Three out of five plus. This place is trying to be very, very true to its deli name. It is, um, this is a brick, okay? 
Um, this thing is like the size of like half of, I have a big head, like half of my head, this thing. Like huge like loaf of bread, like stuffed in between. It's uh, like huge pieces of rotisserie chicken. Uh, I was expecting like shaved rotisserie chicken. This is just huge chunks of chicken with uh, tomato, lettuce, on top, so you get like a whole chicken breast chopped in there. You got mayo on top, mayo on the bottom, cheddar cheese. Let's see if I can do this. Mine bread is soggy, just like the princess's was. Luckily, it's a little bit thicker, so it's not as soggy as hers, but still pretty close. You can see the mayo sort of like soaking through. Luckily, they sandwich the tomatoes, so it's not completely soaked through, but it's still a big boy. I don't even know which side of this thing to eat. It's a little soggy. It's gonna be like seeing me unhinge my jaw, but like this is, this almost should've been cut in two. This thing is massive. So that was a, that was a slippity sloppity mess. The uh, cheese is good, tomatoes are good, but everything is so slippery, so like when you bite into it, I'm trying to like take a significant bite and then also trying to prevent it from like shooting out the other side of the sandwich because there's so much going on in there. This is with the chicken pieces being so big, like you literally have to like chomp down. It's not a light bite sandwich, it's in Subway. This is like two public slow stacked on top each other trying to like bite through those to get, make sure you get everything in a bite. The flavors are good, it definitely breathes jelly sandwich to me. And the chicken, which I was expecting to be a dried out mess, is actually nice and juicy. Very well seasoned rotisserie chicken. Um, it's a good sub. It's not going to sway me away from the Publix down the street, but if I'm here on Disney property and I'm craving deli sandwich, I think this represents nicely. But the thing is, I can't stop thinking about the princess sandwich. I can't. It's just All that yours. good. All yours. Four to five plus. This is a sandwich I would come back to. But having had the plant-based sandwich, just stuck on the brain. Twitter paid it over food. As I'm eating this thing and it gets more deformed, it reminds me of a princess's uh, plant-based sandwich from Homecoming where you bite into it and you basically have to reassemble this thing every time because it just flies all over the place. You're definitely getting your money's worth. I'm not complaining, but uh, it's, it's a bit messy. It's, it's, it's a workout. So, in honor of the now defunct, not defunct, but the now gone Boardwalk Bakery replaced by the Boardwalk Deli, I felt like I was obligated to get some sort of dessert and or treat. So I got a Mickey brownie, decorated in the 50th sprinkles with ears. Because why not? You guys like desserts. What made you, like you choose a Mickey brownie? Of all the desserts that they had there, why the Mickey brownie? Honestly? Because I didn't read the menu or I would have gotten the key lime tart. That's really it. I have no attachment to the Mickey shape of the, of the item. Mickey shapes are not superior to other shapes. You take that back. I will not. I'll just take the ear. <gasps> Maybe. It wants to come out. There we go. That's what you get for saying bad things about the mouse. Well, the mouse can't hear me with only one ear. Oh. Mm. Bye. I can see the appeal. It's a good brownie. No, it's not better taste than because it's Mickey shape. Yes, it is. But it's a good brownie. Sprinkles nice and crunchy. It's moist without being like falling apart and dense enough to give you like a nice mouthful without feeling like you're chewing sand. You're doing Mickey proud. I think. Three and a half out of five plus. Cut. In 4K? Literally 4K. This Cut. Yes, I ate the brownie. I ate all of the mouths. I don't feel sorry about it. I want to apologize before. It was a decent brownie. Reminds me of those gas station cosmic brownies. I said what I said. Wow, you're rude.
So that has been the Boardwalk Deli. I'm actually sad that I didn't get a big pickle because I did forgot want they had the plant, the vegan uh, big pickle house made. Prepackaged. But Good we boys. get to come back now and I yes. get to get that the next time that we come. And I guess um, if this video gets at least 50 likes, we'll come back for breakfast. Yes. Uh, this is definitely, I think, a great addition to the Boardwalk. I'd like to I see agree. a revitalization of the Boardwalk. Part of that revitalization, I would like to see an actual parking system. I think that this is much better than uh, the the bakery option because the bakery we just really didn't have a lot of food. This is an actual. So, it's like an elevated it's grab like an and go. Option, yeah, yeah. While still having deli options, they still have like uh, uh, croissants and cupcakes yeah, like and tarts, things. but then they have deli stuff. So like it works out well. I think it will be a popular spot. I think as so. As soon as everybody discovers it's here. And it fits the theme of um, the boardwalk, New yeah. Jersey and all that that jazz. What well, I wanna know what you guys think. On your next visit to the boardwalk, will you visit the boardwalk deli? Let me know in the comments below. If there's any place on the boardwalk you think is a better stop or you think that we should go that we haven't already gone, which is all of them, so just let us know. Uh, the comments is always a good place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this and we have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, I'm pretty sure that Bear is just going to snap himself out of existence and never visit New Jersey or any Wanda Vision thing. Are you just accusing me of trying to Thanos myself? Maybe? You heard the girl. <laughs>